Okay, uh, this is Matthew Diltz, the lead developer of Tor Eternum. I am here to show you what we have coming up next in the October patch for Tor Eternum, as well as talk about possible uh, future development plans. So the most recent patch for Tor Eternum, update 63.0, is gonna have uh, two big things. One is a total overhaul of the way secondary attributes work in terms of how they scale as you level up. One of the things uh, that was kind of an issue before is as you leveled up, um, as your power increased, your secondary attributes would go down, which was kind of confusing. People were all constantly asking me, you know, why, why is my haste percentage going down as I level up? Or why did my haste percentage go down when I got a higher level item? Uh, that is being removed completely. The inverse scaling of secondary attributes is being removed completely. Um, so what you what used to happen is your secondary attributes were balanced around this sort of arbitrary measure of how much power you have. Um, as your power went up, if your secondary attributes also did not go up, then the effectiveness of your secondary attributes would not go up. Um, and so now what's going to happen is from now on, anytime your secondary attributes go up, the effectiveness of your secondary attributes will go up and anytime your power goes up, your secondary attributes should be entirely unchanged. Uh, what this does mean is lower level players might experience a small uh, loss in secondary attributes, but generally anyone who has been progressing in the game for a little bit, uh, you're going to find that you are just more powerful than before. Uh, because what it was before is all your secondary attributes were balanced around uh, you progressing through the game and you would always have sort of the same effectiveness from your secondary attributes. But now um, your secondary attributes will actually just get stronger the longer you progress through the game. So my haste might go from 30% uh, to 35% to 40% or something like that. Um, so that's the first change. The inverse scaling of secondary attributes is now gone. Um, I don't really have a great way of showing that other than just kind of you know, showing you my secondary attributes and showing you a bunch of different gear. Um, the second change that's a little bit easier to show off is uh, a lot of the cooldown-based attributes um, have been changed to a system where the first piece of cooldown gear you get is much stronger than it was before. Uh, and so let's see, I can probably show that off by, let's strip off all of our cooldown reduction. So right now I have no cooldown reduction and you'll see the first piece of cooldown for stealth that I put on is gonna be 34%. The second piece of cooldown stealth that I put on is gonna be about another 30%. And then, well, actually that's a bad example because that was way more stealth cooldown. Okay, the second piece of stealth that I put on stealth cooldown that I put on was about like, what is that, 25%? So it went 34% and then 25%. The third piece of cooldown stealth that I put on went from 59 to 75. So that was only like 25%. And so you can see that the value of it is uh, decreasing a little bit each time. And so now it's gonna go from 75% to 84%. So that last one dipped off pretty significantly. Um, so what, what was it? It went from about 35% to about 30% to about 25%. And then the last one was like, what's that, 10%? Yeah. So it goes down in value each time. Um, and there's a reason for this. Uh, it's because when you go from 0% stealth to 20% stealth, that's actually less useful than going from 20% stealth to 40% stealth. Um, and the most extreme and obvious example is going from 80% stealth cooldown to 100% stealth cooldown is really useful because now that, that means you have no stealth cooldown. Um, so just generally, we, we've put the cooldown abilities on a curve and that means um, you can kind of experiment a little bit more with cooldown reduction. That first piece of cooldown reduction gear isn't complete and total trash. So a good example would be a penance cooldown. So a single piece of penance cooldown now brings you to 44%. Um, so you might consider maybe putting on two pieces of penance cooldown, which before would have been, let's see if I have another piece of penance cooldown. There we go. So you might consider two pieces of penance cooldown, which brings your penance down to 15 seconds. 
Whereas before it would have only been like 40%, which wouldn't have been very helpful. Um, so yeah, most of the cooldowns have been put on a, a pretty hefty curve where that first piece of cooldown gear should feel much more valuable. And then that last piece of cooldown gear, man, you might not even need it. Um, going back to the rogue example. Uh, going back to the rogue example, we have three pieces of stealth gear, four pieces of stealth gear, the fifth piece of stealth gear goes from 84% to 88%. And so you could very well do without that. You have four, four seconds stealth or you have five seconds stealth. Do you really need that extra second? That's kind of up to you. Um, so that last piece of CDR gear really isn't that mandatory anymore. Um, okay, so those are the two attribute changes. Uh, the last two changes that I could possibly show to you um, I'm gonna get slapped if I do that. Also, since I just screwed with all my gear, I'm now completely useless. So the last two changes are for the exploration phase. Um, right now, the exploration phase, I think is the weakest part of the game. So we've been really trying to kind of beef it up a little bit with a little bit more content. Uh, this first patch, we have two new mechanics in the exploration phase, uh, possibly more, depends what we can get done this week. Um, and there's gonna be more coming soon. <clears throat> I can't really showcase it because that would take the mystery away, uh, but there are new exploration mechanics and we're gonna be adding more of those. So the next things that we're working on the game uh, in future patches is obviously just gonna be more exploration mechanics, more boss mechanics, and more unique items. Probably the next major patch, I think we're gonna try to get the new game plus feature in for the longer term players. Um, just a way to extend progression. You know, if you've played for a while, but you're finding yourself, you know, hard stuck on floor 60 or 80, uh, we're going to add a way to soft reset the game so you can experience the 1 to 50 grind again, or 1 to 60 or whatever floor you're on. Um, but you'll be doing so with some small advantage. And the idea would be, I think Tora Turnum is a really good game to play, you know, 5, 10, 20 hours. You do your grind up, you get some gear, you try that gear out, and, you know, until I add some some more hyper endgame stuff, that's kind of it. Uh, and so the fun of the game will be to do these soft resets, do it again, get a little bit more powerful each time. Um, that's probably going to be the next feature we're looking into for the November slash December update. Um, some other ideas for the far distant future, uh, possibly in 2023. I think considering maybe bots for solo play, I think um, Tora Turnum when you're playing by yourself is kind of a bummer. I think if bots were to make that more fun, like uh, maybe like a little priestess bot follows you around and heals you, or if you're playing a priestess, maybe a little rogue bot follows you around and kills stuff. I think that would be, um, that'd be pretty fun, I think. So gonna possibly be looking into that next year. Um, wouldn't be that complicated. It's more just whether or not it's actually good design. I think the game plays best when you're playing actual co-op. Um, but obviously, when there's not that many people playing, it's kind of a bummer to play by yourself. So I think it would be a good way to get people engaged. And then if there's people online, then it's more likely that you'll actually have a real co-op game. Um, so that's it. Thanks for listening to me talk.